G'day folks, in this video we're making a simple spinning top. I'm also using an eBay parting tool which I think did reasonably well. This is the fourth video this part has created. The first one was where my grandson found out that things without coolant can get really hot. That was one of those burns that, ah, oh, you forget about it after a few minutes, and he did, it was gone. So there was no permanent damage to his skin. The next video was this one, where I broke the front off the insert. And the next video was me doing it again. Here I'm using an aluminium insert to do the turning. And yes, this is the same depth of cut and feed rate that actually pulled the an earlier part out of the chuck and broke the insert. When I do a can cycle for removing the stock I leave just 0.05 on the faces to be removed any more than that and I find the low feed actually creates a chatter. Here we have this $25 eBay parting tool getting to work the first groove is only 0.03 feed because that's the one where it's the chips can get jammed in the groove and then I actually ended up speeding this bit up to uh, 0 0.07 per rev feed. These inserts I actually bought from eBay separately from the parting tool. They were sold as being grooving tools and it said that they would cut sideways. And look it does! That's amazing. I have to admit I was really quite impressed that these inserts worked as well as they did. I think it was like $20 for a packet of 10. And there you get an idea of uh, what the part looks like. It's looking quite reasonable. In this clip I've reduced the depth of cut to 1.5 rather than the 2 which it was on when the part actually pulled out of the air chuck. The air chuck is a uh, pneumatic opening but it's spring powered to hold it closed. And I must admit it's it actually works well on this size lathe. If something pulls out it's because it's gone wrong or you're actually asking the lathe to do more than the lazy lathe is capable of anyway. Here's a look at the Hercus DOS software and this is a stock removal canned cycle which will then be followed up by a finishing pass, which is this. There you go. Now we're doing a tool change. I normally edit these out, but I thought I'd leave this one in. So here we are back with this eBay grooving insert. That lump there was because the coolant wasn't coming out of the spray mister fast enough. This groove was originally part of the grooving canned cycle but I realised that if I made it a separate groove I could slow it down and then speed up the rest of the grooving cycle. Have a look at the finish on these faces as they're being created. They're really quite good. Towards the end of the video I've actually got a screenshot of the eBay listing if you want to have a look to see if you can find them. Here's the grooving cycle with a 1.5 millimeter step over and no pecking, just goes straight through. I just moved the start of the canned cycle to get rid of that disc, stop it occurring. Here the insert's doing a bit of profiling and here it's doing the finish pass. And you can see there's quite a nice little chip coming off there. And the finish is really quite good too. And this is one part, because of all the weight being at the other end, you really don't want to part it off. If it gets parted off, it gets ruined because it's thrown all over the place. Here's the simulation of the profile being cut. There's the surface finish on the piece that was held in the chuck. If the parting finish on the part was that good, I'd be really pleased. And the surface finish of the spindle was quite good too. Here's the listing that uh, was on eBay. 
I think the distinction is that you need to be looking for grooving inserts rather than padding inserts. Grooving seems to imply that they'll cut sideways. Now you can spend a couple of relaxing moments watching a top spinning. And of course the part's not finished, it needs that parting nib removed, which will be another operation. Thank you for watching.